Welcome back to This Day in Scottish History. I'm your host Colin MacDonald and today we're revisiting a tragic event in Scottish history that took place on October 13, 1863, the Winchborough Rail Crash. This accident was Scotland's first major head-on train collision and it shook the country to its core. While the crash left 17 people dead and many more injured, it has largely faded from collective memory today, overshadowed by other events in Scotland's history. However, this terrible accident left a lasting impact on rail safety regulations and serves as a grim reminder of the dangers of early railway travel. Let's set the scene. Winchborough is a small village located between Edinburgh and Glasgow. The crash occurred in a deep 30 foot cutting just west of Craigton House, a mile and a half northwest of the village itself. If you were to stand on the bridge along the minor road between 12 Mile Lodge and the former Abercorn Primary School and look over the parapet, you'd be staring at the scene of this tragic accident. The rail line between Edinburgh and Glasgow was undergoing repairs at the time of the crash and only a single line was in operation. To prevent collisions on this single track, a pilot engine was supposed to escort each train through the section. On that fateful evening, however, this procedure broke down. Due to a mix-up involving the pointsman, the Glasgow-bound train was mistakenly allowed onto the track without the proper escort while the Edinburgh-bound train was already approaching from the opposite direction. What made this crash so tragic was that it was entirely avoidable. The trains collided in a curved section of the cutting, and by the time the drivers spotted each other, they were just 300 yards apart. Both drivers slammed on their brakes and attempted to reverse their engines, but it was too late. The slow speeds of the trains one at 20 miles per hour and the other at just 8 mph, prevented even more catastrophic damage, but the collision was still devastating. The driver of the Glasgow train, Archibald Neal, was one of the fortunate survivors. He leapt from his engine just before impact, suffering serious injuries, but managing to survive. Tragically, the driver of the Edinburgh train wasn't so lucky and perished in the crash. Among the dead was James Hosey, manager of the Oakley Ironworks and founder of the Bathgate Foundry. Ironically, Hosey had made his living producing cast iron for railways only to lose his life on the rails he helped build. As the crash occurred in the early evening, around 6.30pm on a rainy October night, Conditions were miserable for survivors and rescuers alike. The first hour after the crash was spent in near darkness, with survivors stumbling around the wreckage, trying to light fires in the pouring rain. The only illumination came from the burning remains of one of the train's tenders. A passenger, Mr Dawson, son of a former provost of Linlithgow, managed to reach a nearby house, commandeer a cart and bring the first news of the disaster to Linlithgow. It was from there that doctors and help were finally dispatched to the scene. The local inns in Linlithgow, the Star and Garter and the Red Lion, became makeshift hospitals, taking in dozens of the injured. Twelve people died at the scene of the crash, with five more succumbing to their injuries either at the Edinburgh Royal Infirmary or upon arrival at Linlithgow. Despite the valiant efforts of rescuers and medical personnel, it was a bleak scene made worse by the Victorian press, which sensationalised the gruesome details of the injuries in a way that would be considered highly inappropriate today. In the aftermath of the disaster, Captain Tyler of the Board of Trade was appointed to investigate the crash. His report revealed several failings, including Lax's procedures and vague instructions. The pilot engine, which was meant to prevent collisions, had been used for other duties that day, leaving the single track stretch vulnerable. Additionally, the pointsman, George Newton, had mistaken a ballast train for the pilot engine, leading to the fatal error. While Newton was not charged, 
Two officials from the Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway Company were taken to trial for culpable homicide and neglect of duty. However, as was the case then, as it often is now, proving corporate negligence and court proved difficult and both men were acquitted. Despite the acquittals, the tragedy led to stricter guidelines for single track operations in Scotland. A key lesson from this devastating accident. As railways expanded across the country, safety regulations would continue to evolve, but the Winchburg crash remains an early and critical case study in the importance of stringent safety protocols. The Winchburg rail crash, while almost forgotten today, serves as a powerful reminder of the dangers of early railway travel and the human cost of industrial progress. It highlights the importance of vigilance, communication and the responsibility of companies to protect the public. Scotland's railways would never be the same after this tragic day in 1863. Thank you for joining us for this episode of This Day in Scottish History. Tune in tomorrow for another fascinating journey into Scotland's past. Until then, I'm your host, Colin MacDonald. Haste you back.